Hello and welcome back to video lecture number six in this lecture series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Shevrestod from the University of Skövde. Uh, in this lecture we're going to have a look at how we can uh, configure the different clients in our network to behave in different ways depending on what user is logged in and so on and so forth with group policy objects. So this lecture is basically about uh, configuring clients from our server. But before we go ahead and do that, I'm going to actually uh, prove to you that I didn't do anything wrong with the finance folder before. As you remember, I had some issues getting Kama to have access. So I'm just going to go in here in the finances folder and I'm going to show you this effective access and show you here that Kama actually does have read access as we planned. I have no idea why he didn't get access from uh, from the beginning but this serves as an uh, as a good example of caching because uh, ever so often it happens that windows uh, machines do cache settings and even when you reconfigure they may still have wrongful configuration cached at the client side uh, so that could be one reason and um, and this and uh, this caching thing is something that you need to be extra aware of when it comes to group policy objects that we're going to work with now and uh, because we're going to look at it we, we before we talk further what we're going to do is that we're going to hit tools in the upper uh, upper right corner and we're going to click group policy management this is a pane that you have from the that you have in active directory domain you have this group policy settings and um, so what this basically is is that you see here that you have uh, your tree pane on the left hand side and you have all, all the organizational units that you created so we have my users we have domain controllers rule groups rule groups but as i said in the previous lecture you don't have those pre-configured pre -configured organizational units so for instance you don't have the users in the group policy management console and um, and what group policies basically is is a list of different settings basically any configuration that you can do to a client uh, you can do using uh, using group policy objects and those settings that you do here in this uh, in this window will be propagated to the clients uh, that you choose that they should be propagated to or the users so we'll have a look at this, but what you should know is that these settings are read into the client computer either when the computer boots or when a user log in, logs in. And then it's going to be cached, so the client won't continuously pull for new configuration. Uh, rather, if you do new configuration, it's going to take a while before it takes effect. Therefore, when we do troubleshooting, it's a good idea to log in with a user that's never been logged on before, because then that user will get the setting that applies for him or her, and you can be sure it has the newest set of configuration. And we'll end this lecture with a little bit about troubleshooting GPOs, because it can be tiresome, and you have to, uh, you have to understand that sometimes taking a coffee break is the best way to configure group policy objects. Uh, that being said, we should start by looking into how we create uh, group policy objects and how we decide what users or computers they should apply to. Uh, we may start by just taking a look at the uh, default domain policy. So as you see here when I zoom in, under the top domain, do9joaka.local, we have a default domain policy. So let's go ahead and click that and we're going to see just very briefly what's in there. So we right click it and take edit. Uh, and what we have here is basically a listing or a browsable uh, view of all the different policies that we can have. And what I want you to make note of is that they are separated into computer configuration and user configuration. So computer configuration is something that's going to apply for a computer. And user configuration will be applied for a user. And this has a meaning because you can either choose to link your group policy objects to an organizational unit that contains computers or to users. But depending on what you want to do, you have to be able, you, you have to remember and keep track of this. So you have to know what's a computer setting or what's a user setting. So for instance, if I just go back to, uh, to the pane here, uh, how you decide what group of users or computer that a GPO should apply to is by linking them in, in this tree pane of organizational units. So, for instance, I asked to show you, I created a GPO called test and linked it under my users. That means that that GPO will only apply to the users and computers that is in the organizational unit called my users. 
So if you have a computer stashed away somewhere else, like in domain controllers or in rule groups for some reason, then whatever configuration you do and test will not be applied to, to those objects. Uh, on the other hand, it is inherited down, so the default domain policy, which is applied to the top domain, will also be applied to all the organizational units down under. And why is this important? Well, a very common mistake that I've seen in class is that students link their GPOs to the group, to the organizational units uh, containing the group. The problem is that those organizational units does not com contain any users, so there is no users that a GPO can be applied for. And likewise, as you see here, there is no organizational unit that is going to hold our client computer. So if we go back in Active Directory real quick, uh, you can see that we have a default folder called computers, but it doesn't have this little thingy on it that marks it as a, as a true organizational unit. Uh, so the computers in here, well, there is no organ, there's no way for us to link a GPO only to this organizational unit containing this computer. That is why a best practice is to actually create a new organizational unit that holds the computers that you added. So we'll just do that real quick and we will call it comps. And then I will just move the computers from here and into the comps. And now when I get back into the group management console and hit refresh, you should see that I should have a new folder, maybe I have to restart it, so I'll just click out of here and I'll go to Server Manager, Tools, Group Policy Management and yeah, now you see that it's here, comps, and I can, if I want, create a new GPO here that I can call computer settings. And what is nice now is that, well, I could link this uh, up on the top domain and it would be applied for for all of these different organizational units, but I want to link them in as close to the source as possible. Because what happens when I do the computer settings here is that it will only be read in when it's important for these guys here. If I put it here, it's going to be, uh, be read for every object that comes in line. So what will happen is that if I dump all my uh, GPOs just on the top domain, all the GPOs will be read in every time some computer boots up or user logs in. Making the, uh, making the process of reading all the GPOs rather slow. So best practice is to keep them as, as far, far down as possible. And now you may have noticed on the topic of deciding who a setting gets applied to, that well, this is all nice and good for computers, but what about users? What happens if I want an organization or a GPO to only apply to a subset of my users? Well, then one way to do it is to actually split up your structure of organizational units so you'll have uh, more organizational units you may have R&D you may have sales sales and so on and so forth and when you do it like this I guess we have to restart again nope there they are when you do it like this you can create GPOs and link them to the uh, to the organizational units that you created. So I can have an R&D uh, GPO here that will only apply for R&D. So now whenever a user in that's positioned in this organizational unit logs in, then this GPO will be, will be evaluated. But when a sales user comes along, it will not. Uh, however, in this case, we didn't place our users in those organizational units. We placed them all in my users. And we still need a way to decide. Maybe we still want a GPO that only applies to, for instance, the IT department. Well, then we can solve this by what is called security filtering. So if I click the GPO, I will get some basic information about the GPO. And you can see down here in the security filtering pane that now there is, uh, now what it says is that the settings in this GPO can only be applied to the following groups, users and computers. Now it says authenticated users, so it can be applied to anyone, but I can of course remove authenticated users and instead add, for instance, IT, meaning that now the settings in this test GPO can only be applied to, to IT. I have to give you a, a finger of warning here, though, because I have noticed that security filtering doesn't always work as intended. I don't really know why, and perhaps there is something that you could read up on if you go down and dirty with Windows internals, but I've learned that security filtering doesn't always work, so the effect of this setting can very well be that 
the GPO won't work for anyone. But we're going to look at that, and we're going to test it through. Um, so, I guess that's it for the quick overview. Now we should go down and dirty and do some settings. So the first setting that I want to do is that I actually want to remove the recycle bin for users in the IT department. And so I can do that with a GPO. So let's work with this test GPO. Maybe we will rename it so we can have something a little bit more descriptive. So we take no, no bin IT. Uh, and then to modify this, set, do some settings, I will right click it and I will choose edit. So now I need to know if I'm going to do a computer or user configuration, but since this will be applied to the users in the IT department, doing user configuration seems like the most uh, reasonable way to go. So I'll change the paint sizes here a little bit more for readability. Uh, so how I should do this is by either by preparing and knowing a little uh, uh, roundabout where it is, or I'll just have to dig through all the different settings. And as you see, there is quite a lot of settings that you can do with GPOs. So all of those things that are down here is things that you can control. And if you click somewhere, you will see the actual settings to the right hand side. And if you want to configure something, you just double click it and you will get to the configuration pane. So now let's see where we are. What we wanted to do was to control that users cannot remove the recycle bin or, or cannot access the recycle bin. So what we wanted to do was user, pol user configuration and I happen to know that it's about a, pol a policy and I think it's an administrative template and a desktop. So I'll just mark desktop there and now you can see the different settings that we can do uh, under desktop. Uh, and right about uh, pretty much down to the end there is one called remove re recycle bin I come from the desktop, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now you see that it's not configured at all, so I'll just double click it, and I'll just hit enable. So for every GPO, you will see some information when you click it, so you'll have some help. In some cases, you will have different options that you can set, and you will have supported on telling you what operating systems that it will work for. So this one should be able to work for all operating systems of Windows Server 20, uh, 2003 or Windows XP, Windows XP or later. Some will only work up until Windows Vista, some will work from Windows Vista, some will only work for Windows 10 and so on and so forth. So now it's at least, uh, at least it's enabled, so I'll go apply. Okay, and I can take this uh, management editor down and one thing I want to show you now is that in the group policy management pane here, uh, I can actually, if I want to see what group what settings that this GPO contains, I can actually click the settings tab up here. And that will have a overview of what settings that are contained in this GPO, which can be quite nice for troubleshooting. And so now we should see that it works. So we will head over to the client and we will log in with someone in the IT department and I happen to know that I have such a user that is called Joni and so I'll log in with him and just to make sure that this computer reads down everything this is the first time I log in with this user so I'm, I think that it is going to take a while because it has to do all of this high-end how are you process and we're not going to wait for that so instead we will go and do uh, another group policy and then we will come back and see how it worked so the next policy that I want to show you is one that is quite common, and that is to automatically map um, shared folders. So remember that we created a couple of shared folders uh, during the last lecture, and we had the home folder being mapped under this PC. Now this is a server, so and, admin, and the admin account doesn't have a home folder, so there is none here. But I had my home folder here for easy access, and I want the rest of the shared folders to also be accessible nice and quickly. So let's do that real quick. Uh, so what we're going to do is do the full process of creating a new GPO. Again, we wanted to apply for our users, so we put it under my users here. So we right click there and we take create a new uh, a GPO in this domain and link it here. And we will call it map drives. And right now, as you can see in the settings pane here, it's completely empty. We can see under the scope that the security field filtering says authenticated users, so it should work for everyone. And that is what we want. 
So let's right click it and go to edit and I'll make this window large for you. And what we want to do is go to uh, preferences, window settings and drive maps. So this window looks a little bit different, uh, but this is a listing of all the different drives that we want to map out for the users when they log in. So what we do here is that we right click and we just take new mapped drive. So what we need to know now is the path to the drive. That is the first first thing we need to know. So we will go back to our shared folders where it is on disk and let's begin with all. So just right click all and go to sharing and you can see I missed again all. Make sure you right click all and go to sharing and you will see the path here backslash backslash sewer backslash all. Quite fun host name. So backslash backslash sewer backslash all. And um, we can have a label here making it show up as something. So let's call it common files so that everyone knows that it's for everyone. And then we can assign a, a drive letter and then we can either take use and select something or we can take use first available starting from some point. What's important here is that we ensure that there are no uh, conflicts. So we need to make sure that there will actually be a drive letter available for this one. So let's start on something high and just say use and let's connect it as Q. That will be good. Uh, so this should actually be what we need to do. So we'll just hit apply and OK. And now we have one of our drive maps done. And let's go into uh, let's go into the client now and see if the the GPOs that we've done so far, if they work. So remember that we did the no bin IT. So if Yoni is online here. So as you may have noticed, it took me a little while before it actually works and I had to do some troubleshooting. So I just decided to cut it out to uh, not bug you with it. But I'm going to take you just real quickly to the process of what I did. Uh, but before that, let me show you that the drive map is actually done. So if I go to uh, if, if I go to the file explorer and go to this PC, you can see that a common files, the file storage area for all the users is actually right here now. So you only can just click right in, uh, right into it. And here is the high from comma that we saw before that we can open. There's nothing in there, but it works. Uh, so the problem was with the security filtering that I talked to, that I described just before that is a little bit iffy in how it works, but now I actually figured it out and tested it. So I hope that this way of using security filtering will stay uh, functional and awesome. So the way that I figured that out in the end was that I used two nice troubleshooting commands. So the first one is uh, GP result. GP result, if you can just use in CMD. Uh, dash R and what this will do is that it will get you a listing of uh, the group policies and some other information about the user that you're in on. So for instance you see here applied group policy objects and you can see that no bin IT and map drives is applied. Uh, so let's just real quickly just show you that if I log into uh, a finance user it will not be so I'll sign out from here and I will just quickly sign in with uh, the user comma. And, I will, and you can see that if I use logging with comma, that group policy should not be applied uh, because we have filtered it out. And the way that we do the filtering is that, uh, yeah, you can see that here we have a recycled bin. So, and the way that we had to do the filtering was that we couldn't only have uh, IT here. So I added IT here uh, as I did before, but I actually had to take authenticated users back. And what you should do here is that you should have authenticated users. So I added it like this, authenticated users, and clicked it. And then I'm going to show you something. So there are two permissions that come into play here. So if I go to advanced, so I can actually list the permissions for different users, uh, you can see here that if I mark authenticated user, it has to read permission that's right here, and, it, uh, and that's all that it have. So it can read the, the group policy. It has to have that. Authenticated user will have to have that for stuff to work. And if I look at IT, it will also have read, but it also have uh, the apply group policy. So what you will need to do if you want to change is that if we just do an example, so we take it from the beginning. So we go to my 
users here and we do a GPO that we call test. So what we need to do if we want test to only apply to IT, we go to scope and we add IT. So we add IT here and the effect now if we go to the delegations tab is that if we look at the permission we will have read and read but we will also have as we can see if we go to if we go to advanced down here and mark authenticated user we will see that we have read but we also have this apply group policy which means that it will be applied to all users so we have to click that out and then check apply and now it will work as expected so that is something that we need to know about it will be removed from the security filtering pane but it has to be still here with read permissions in the delegation tab otherwise it won't work uh, so let's do another one for the map drives because what I want to show you is how we can map and drive only for the users that need it. We can do it within the same GPO. So let's go back to our map drives and we click edit here and we just expand it out. And again, we drill down to preferences, window settings and drive maps. And what we're going to map now is the folder that is called finance. So I am going to just right click here again and I will go take new map to drive. And in this case, the location will be backslash backslash sewer backslash finance. And we can have a label to it. We can call it finance. And then we'll select the drive letter. So let's just, let's take T. That will be good. But now there is some extra configuration that we will do. So if we go to common, then there is something here that is called item level targeting. So we can select what groups of users that this specific drive map will be applied to. So let's check that and we'll go into targeting. So now a very common way is that you only want folders to be mapped for users that should be having at least read access to it. So we'll do that by clicking new item here and we can take security group. So we take new item, security group, so the user is a member of the security group and then if we go down here to read those, we can select a group and let's just type share and we just pick the groups that have read access. So this is the finance folder, so we pick share finance R and then since we have to have another folder uh, or another group as well because the R read write execute guys should also have this folder mapped, we go to new item security group again and now you can see that what happens here is that it says user is a member of the security group la 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 share finance R and the user is a member of uh, another security group that we have not yet selected. This should be an or, right? Because it doesn't have to be a member of both groups. That's never going to happen. It should only be a member of one of the groups. So what we can do is that we right click the bottom one here and we take uh, item options and select or instead. And then again, we take the group, we type share, and then we take share finance RVX. So now it's as we want. This setting will only be applied to users that are a member of the security group share finance R or the security group share finance RWX. So we hit OK here and we hit apply and we hit OK and we can close this one down. And now we're going back to the client just to see that this worked as it should. So now we're in logged in here with comma and what we should be able to do is hit CMD and we should be able to do uh, GP update dash force which forces the client computer to fetch new configuration it works for some GPOs it works worse for some but I know it should work quite fine for the drive maps so if we just hang tight here just for a little bit it should be done in a little while one two three four there it's done and if we go back into the file explorer and we hit this PC you should now see that comma has both finance and common files applied but if we log out and log back into the account uh, to the Yoni account then he as being a member of the IT department should only be able to see uh, the common folder that is named all so let's go back into Yoni and hope that something in this video can work on the first try that would be a refreshing change and takes a while those logins and there it's done see no recycle bin very nice going to the file explorer and going to the to this pc we see that he still only have common files so that's a way that you can 
uh, target which drive maps gets uh, that gets mapped, but it only works for drive maps, unfortunately. And so that is actually it for this video lecture. I hope you learned something, and I do choose to keep those little bit of errors because I think it's a nice way to show some of the troubleshooting that you have to do. But what you should remember is that when we have all the users in one single group, what we have to, or in one single organizational unit, what we have to do is to make sure that when we want to filter, we have to go to scope, we have to add the new group, then we have to go to delegation, click authenticated users, go to advanced, and make sure that the permissions for authenticated users is read but it should only be and it should not be apply group policy because the apply group policy settings should only be there for the groups uh, that the group policy should actually be applied to so if we go to it here then we should have the apply group policy permission checked so that would be the correct way to do it so thank you for this video uh, and i hope i see you next time